Welcome to Bomber Country Podcast, a podcast about country, connection and community. It's it's definitely been a long time coming. We, we Well, how long has it been? We spoke about this years ago. Years ago, man. I mean, you were in um, McAllister Street, I think, at the time, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, that's going back 2012, uh, 2013. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's the first time I got a heat, haircut there. Yeah, yeah. So... Well, I had hair then. I had hair then. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then then you moved to Canelands, and that that was a big change because yeah. I know um, at that time we maybe uh, 2019 we started with our company Reconcile Life. So, mm. were you in Canelands? Oh, um, gee. What, yeah. year, what year did you end up in Canelands? I feel like it was around 2020. So I think you'd already. Well, You'd already kicked off, and then just you're transitioning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember sort of throwing things back and forward, and seeing, yeah. you know, um, your work and what you were doing, and yeah. it kind of aligned itself with some of the things that I was trying to achieve within my shop. You know, yeah. definitely, you know, the community vibe and the bigger picture. Well, at that time, I think when you were in McAllister Street, I was working. We were doing um, foster care, or well, Indigenous Wellbeing Program foster care and it was around like helping um you know young mums young dads Mm. going through um you know domestic violence you know um going through drug addictions all of those things and child safety you know coming in and and the children being removed and then those parents having to find a way back to their kids again yeah and what what we were finding back then and before that but the biggest issues were were domestic violence and the um, child neglect and abuse, I guess. Yeah. So we started in 2019, and I think I had known you before that because you were just across the road from where I worked. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And so at that time, I think you were doing a lot of stuff with with youth, and yeah. I mean, I mean, the the whole point of what you were doing was more around attracting that younger demographic. Hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what I keep on saying. I've said it over and over again. You know. Um, the whole like the haircut for us and our journey was a byproduct yeah and which is quite strange for someone to say that owns a barbershop but realistically we were trying to create that community hub and that safe haven and that sort of beacon for the young like i mean the amount of young people that come and just hang out yeah it's a safe space yeah no judgment like and i think that was really really important And, and i think that's probably what got us back um you know spending time together yeah. because you know it aligned with so many things that you, you, we were trying to do yeah, yeah, because I, I mean at the end of the day like you know we're both born and raised here and community has always been mm-hmm. at the forefront of our intentions yeah. you know 100 percent. And I, I feel like for me and what the thing that i think personally for me that connected what we were doing even though we we're different streams or whatever the thing that connected what we were both trying to achieve was helping people find that sense of belonging oh was yeah, it, would you and say that, that? that's it's man, that's huge. And I think, you know, in in a town like ours, and 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 all parts of you know rural settings as a whole, it's that sense of belonging and that sense of right. um, understanding, which which flows onto self worth, self concept, etc. Yeah. I think, um, you know, when you know where you belong and how you belong, yeah. and where you fit in the bigger picture, I think, um, yeah. obviously, that spawns in a peace and. And well-being. Yeah. Well, I tell you, with, so my background's in youth justice. I worked in youth justice for about twelve years, and that that experience of working with youth, working with not just with youth, you're working with their families, really. Yeah. And those families, whatever whatever like their struggle was, um, you know, kids were at a place where they were just man, they were looking for um, that place of, of safety, like you say, but the place of belonging. Mm. And I think because we had we had young people that were committing offences yeah. to go to, to go to jail because it was safer there. 100%. To get three hots in a cot, you know, yeah. and, and they weren't on the street. They weren't having men chase them around the streets. They were in a place where they knew they had safety, they had security, um, but they also had they had, also had things to do, yeah. them, you know, when, whereas, you know, in a community like ours, um, there's not a lot of things to do. No, no. You know? And that's, and that's you know, like it, talking to the, to the younger ones and especially the offenders slash re- re-offenders you know some of them the boredom yeah you know and then comes safety from that why you know why are you you know stealing cars yeah 100 percent because you know they're, they're bored and want to do you know 
hood rat stuff for lack of a better word but right. like ultimately if they steal a car and they can fit five of them in the car they all know where they all are right they all know that they're all safe right. and it's like wow that is a i get it, it but it's such a distorted way to look at things you know you're you're, you're committing serious felonies yep. you know which which is why you know scenarios like yours and and mine have uh, a place in society where yeah. people can come and be safe. I just wish it was twenty four seven. You know. Yeah. So I guess people would ask then, like me, I'm you know I'm mid forties. Mm. You know we're around that same age bracket. Hey, look out! You're, hey, you're probably hey. a bit older than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely got longer hair. Yeah, yeah, I got none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm forty one. Forty one. Well. Yeah. So I mean, like for us, we like growing up in Mackay. I remember, man, back in the 80s, we had Sugar Time Festivals. Yeah. And um, we had, you know, people would, would get in the harbour. You had the old train at the harbour. And man, yeah. I used to love those those big bins with the... With the fish, with the, the goldfish. Yeah, bro. The barbecues, you know. And yeah. you just think, oh, man, that's so dangerous. <laughs> Nowadays. But we used to go jetty like, jump. I remember we went jetty jumping off there once. We went. And then, remember, they had the like, corner store? Yeah, down that's the, right, the corner store. Yeah, so like we, went, we went, we were jetty jumping, and then we went to the corner store. Yeah. And and because like, we you know when when one fella's got five bucks, we all got five bucks. Yeah, one one of the brothers buys uh, some chips. You know yeah. we all got chips. Yeah. So we all went jetty jumping. We all went back to the shop. We have got like a couple of bucks worth of chips and some like a, a two liter coke or something. Yeah, right. So we're all eating like kings. Yeah. Because none of us had money back then. Yeah, back then. And then know, um, we go back to our spot place. and they're pulling like a three four meter tiger shark out of where we've been jumping. <laughs> But that was fun back yeah, then, you know what I mean? That definitely. was like harmless fun. We and, just and doing the beach, own. the beach was amazing back oh, then. Like, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like we had we had the playground, the beach was right there. Yeah. With, you know, and I think for me, I grew up in Mackay. Back then, it was a community where you had, man, you had you had um, Aboriginal, you had South Sea, mm. you had Torres Strait, you had, you know, Malaysian, yeah. you had obviously European, Australian, whatever you wanted to say. There's, there was all a mix of. People oh, such diverse demographics, yeah. In that place, and I and I grew up in Slate Point, see, so born mm. and raised there. And I think, you know, for me, thinking the work that I'm doing with with people who may be struggling, I grew up in a family that didn't have weren't surrounded by domestic violence in that way. No, we we, we weren't surrounded by I never knew drug, it. drug abuse, all of that yeah. stuff. So, for me, I think I took it maybe for granted that you know that I had that, and yeah. realizing then as you get older and going into those places that not everybody had that opportunity nah. to grow up in a family yeah. that was stable that yeah. was connected to their community yeah and also had the opportunity to put their kids through school and 100 percent that sort of thing as well you know so well yeah. I, I grew up just down south just at alligator creek there yeah. you know, primary industries on the on the land on the cane farm yeah, right. yeah. and you know like so so my childhood was very much close-knit community like you know my cousins just lived like 50 meters that way in a house yeah. on the same property and <coughs> um you know other cousins down the street or mm. but but you know someone was burning cane on a friday night we were all burning cane on a friday night you know what i mean like so it's like everyone would come around and help each other's farms and that's what i agree and we'd have cutout parties at the end yes. of the season yeah. you know what i mean and it would be like every farm from around would there'd be like 50 to 100 people right. at everyone's parties yeah. you know yeah. and so that community and unit unity yep. um, presence is what I grew up with, right. and I think I think because of way society is now, because of you know uh, you know relations on the front line, whether it's mum and dad are working, both working now, whether it's, mm. you know I was blessed to have you know mum at home all the time, and you know but families are now very much working to make ends meet. Right. Dad might be over the hill. Or, you know, mum might be doing night shifts, you know, or, or dad doing night shifts, mum's doing the day shift. Like, so, but there is a lot of disconnection, unfortunately, mm. now, through no, no fault of anybody's. It's just the yeah. way society is. Right. And that's where I feel like our work and some of our industry peers' work is, is so important because it does spruik a unity. Yeah, yeah. It's very needed. Yeah, definitely. And that sense of belonging that we started out with. Right. You know? And I, you know, I think my, because my background, like in youth justice, like I've worked also in, the, um, I used to work on the locos as well, mm. you know, on the, in the sugar time, during the crush and that sort of thing. And um, I worked as a musician. I worked as a teacher aide. Man, I worked. Bro, that's what. That's how. I, that's how I first. Everything. When I first met you. 
Yeah. You were you were the first time I met you. I think you were doing a launch for one of your EPs back oh, in the right. day. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like yeah. it was. I feel like it was in front of the council chambers, maybe next yeah. to the library or something yeah. at the Mech. Yeah. And you were just on the grass with your stomp box right. and your guitar. That would have been like mid two thousands, like two thousand five, two thousand six, yeah. maybe yeah. something yeah. like that. Big dreads back then. Back, yeah, back then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> gotta keep them up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that was some work. But that's <laughs> the work. first time, I, because I was I was a musician back then too. Yes, that's and right. Because you were in a band. Yeah, yeah, I was I was a singer, bit yeah. of a front man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember someone saying, "Bro, you you got to come and check this lad." They have singing barbershops too. Huh? Yeah, quartets, man. <laughs> quartets, that's yeah. the one. Is that what those lads do? Yeah, the B flats. flats. Yeah, the B, B flats. flats. <laughs> yeah, they're just flats. Flats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing too sharp around no, here. Yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, for me, that, that, that experience in our community and growing up, the foundational stuff is, is really important. But aside from that, I think when you've got a, a community where your local government or, you know, you've got... Um, you know, people that are interested in putting back for f- families to do things mm-hmm. like that. That's that's the other part of how families work. You know, because yeah. um, like I said myself, you know, growing up in South Sea Island family, um, my grandfather named me, so I feel like I grew up with that non-Western culture and the Western culture, mm. and I was um, I was able to see both sides. Yeah, that. and I think that to me is one of the reasons why. I'm able to help people, especially Indigenous, you know, yeah. Aboriginal Island people. It doesn't matter, you know, like I say, black, blue, or brindle, it doesn't matter. Mm. If you're in a community, we all affect each other. Yeah. So, for example, if somebody stole a car from my house, my neighbours are affected. If they, if somebody broke into your house, your neighbours are affected. So 100%. It doesn't, you know, even though we might live in these little bubbles that are different to how we grew up, we're still being impacted by what goes on on that, on that bigger sense, on that mm. bigger... I guess um, what's the word? I can't think of the word, but mm. it's it's important to understand how your community functions because if you don't have those support mechanisms mm. in your community, like it's hard, man. It's hard for families. Yeah. And to And that's connect. that's you know that's where it's that saying hard. you know it takes a village to raise a child, right? Because everyone plays an integral role. Yeah, definitely. You know? And yeah. That, and and then I I see so much, um, you know. Uh, importance in that mindset yeah to understand how you know because because ultimately if you live in that um that race that that lonely race where you're you're only um focused on your own Mm. journey and neglecting what's around yeah then the byproduct of that it reverberates it's not it just doesn't end with you yeah you know like you said if someone steals from you you or your neighbor's affected yes and and you know, living a selfish scenario that reverberates yeah. around the community. Yeah, you know, and and, and I, I always said that, you know, there's two things about a small community um, like ours. Um, the waters can get tainted very quickly, mm. but we can fix it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, and where I'm going with that and, and what I mean is, you know, negativity spooks negativity, but, you know, we can fix that. Yeah. You know, let's look at things a glass half full rather than a glass half empty. You know, right. You know. And I feel like, you know, for, for yourself and even in what I've been through myself as well mm-hmm. with our businesses, I feel like there's there's a element of um, being proactive. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like being yeah. proactive and not just like allowing, you know, just to go with the way society goes, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, I feel like, the way that I was brought up, you know, and my, my forefathers were cane cutters too, you know, so we were always known to be a people who who um, who proved their worth or proved their value by their action. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and not just sitting back and waiting for somebody else to do it. And mm-hmm. maybe, you know, maybe that's something that really, without even thinking about it, it's just what's driven me mm-hmm. to, to, to run a program from a grassroots level. Yeah. Um, it didn't come like the government didn't ask me to do it. I I saw a need, hundred percent. And then I was like, I feel like I feel like I can help people mm. in this, and I and I feel like I need to. And that from that place, I think that's where the connection started happening. And then removing the 
you know, the, the stigma mm. of, you know, domestic violence and that it's an institutionalised problem. Yeah. And going, no, it's not an institutional problem, it's a family problem. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a community problem. Just like youth crimes, the same sort of thing, you know, it's, it comes back to families mm. finding that place where they can get connected and the kids can actually start to learn to feel they belong. Yeah. In the community, and what it's what's acceptable within yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And because I, you know, in what, when I was in youth justice, that we used to talk about that in the, how, you know, where where young people feel they belong to a community, mm. they don't offend there. Yeah, and that's imagine, so powerful. Uh, imagine kids who feel like they belong in in Mackay. Mm. So, so because that's my you know that's my town, that's my street, that's my neighbour. Um, but because we have the society where everyone lives in the bubble, like you say takes a village to raise a child the, the problem is nobody wants to live in a village yeah they don't want to act like one yeah yeah that's right do you know what I mean yeah like, and that's that's what I was saying before knowing your your role right knowing what integral role you've got to so so I'm not saying you know what it's it's just you know a magic wand and it just all happens mm. it actually takes hard work but it takes I guess helping people see things from another another perspective mm. and I you know we can have our own perception my perception right now um, is valuable to me mm. but the perspective is the way you see it yeah the way he sees it the way she sees it yeah. and the way I see it and I if I can take all of those points of view I get a I, I don't just have a perception now mm. I have a perspective yeah which is holistic yeah yeah and that that is the that is the mentality of a village is perspective not perception yeah. perception makes it just important about me just what I, the way I see it you know what I'm saying yeah I do because and, I think and if you have people in those those leadership roles in their community who just have who just have perception but they don't have perspective yeah yeah that's where it goes patient yeah they're missing the big picture they're missing the big picture yeah, yeah. and I think um, to that understanding that uh, you know so for me, like one big thing was was understanding that um, you have no control over how people perceive yeah. your actions, right. or you know, and what you do. Like we can have the, we can have this this conversation right now. We can go through all this. We've we've got people behind the scenes here doing audio visual. We've got all this headphone like you know we're lighting. We've got, we've done all this. We've gone out of our way to do this. There's going to be editing involved. Yeah. So we're going to go all out of our way for editing. Then we're going to take time to post it. Now, we've done all this with the purest of intentions. Yeah. We've done all this because we've been proactive and we've, like, this is something that we've wanted to do for so long. And we're like, 100%. this is our time. We, we feel like we can, because it's going to be, this there's conversations that we're having and this yarn in circle and we'll probably get guests in. We've got enough room yeah. on the couch, you know. And, and I feel like there's a, there's a, a space for this. Now we've done this. Doesn't mean like people will digest what we're doing, and they, they can they can walk around and go, "Geez, did you hear them put that podcast up? They just waffled, waffled rubbish the whole time." Oh my god, they're so self righteous and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? And we're sitting here going, "Bro, yeah. we're just," you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, and that was that was that's a big realization for yeah. me as well because and that helped me do. Um, to evolve in my own personal journey yeah, right. Understa understanding like I'll just wake up now as long as I've got my moral compass set to correct bro I can't I can't Man, help how people perceive so, you know what I mean yeah like you know the old saying I, I remember years ago you know some of the old people used to say you never talk about politics and religion I'm like man those are the two things we need to talk about. Yeah. Because if we don't talk about it yeah, yeah. strange things are going to happen you know? and especially when it comes down to your own you know your moral compass yeah you know and and things are happening that you maybe feel, feel like man that's wrong or yeah. maybe oh that shouldn't have happened that way or whatever but again it comes back to us not thinking holistically and just thinking about well you know i'm just going to keep to myself yeah i'm not going to upset people and you know i'm not telling everybody out there to go out and be whatever warlords or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying open open our minds up a bit and think beyond ourselves Oh, I'm and, and like, and, and the whole, you know, judgmental factor as judgmental well, you know, I stop looking over the fence yeah. and like, you know what I mean? Like, and that, cause that happens as well, yeah. you know, and pe keeping up with the Joneses or like, you know, all these things, oh, right, they like, start chipping away at your own. I know with us doing like, so we do camps on country, mm -hmm. you know, we have um, elders and we have mentors, respected mentors, and we have traditional owners that all come on camp with us, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's indigenous, um, 
you know, focus in the sense of that we talk about Indigenous. When I say Indigenous, I'm talking about humans. Yeah. Right? So you can go far enough back in your genealogy, mm -hmm. your far forefathers lived in a village. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you think about William Wallace, mm. right? A warrior. Mm. He's, he's thinking like a village man, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think what we have is where this, the Roman, ancient Rome, the institutionalised mindset that's going to fix everything and make everything better. Like, don't get me wrong, the Western world is great at making money. Mm. Like, it's so good. It's yeah, second good enough. At, it's also yep. good at stealing and losing money. <laughs> but <laughs> but non-Western non cultures, you know, and this is my own view, I, I, th I think they're really good at people. Yeah. I think they're really good at helping other people. And maybe... But for me, I've always said, you know, our, in, when it comes to, you know, Indigenous problems in our society that, you know, we've had to assimilate to Western culture for mm -hmm. so long. Yeah. We've lost some of those key elements that made us who, are, who we are. Well, because they're basic too. They're basic, but it's, it's what it means to be human, right? Yeah. So when you lose that, we've got to come back. It's got to come back the other way. Mm -hmm. it's now, maybe it's time for the Western world to connect into those non-Western ideas. Yeah, and ideologies. Of, and and, of, and you know learn. Of community. Yeah. Of, you know, I, I, when I grew up, I had I was surrounded by uncles mm. and aunties and, and grandfathers. And, you know, yeah. so there was that community where I would, I mean, I would even today, I'll walk down the street and I'll see one of our, you know, community elders or whatever. I don't never met them before, but because they're older, because they care for me, you know, and they're part of my community. I, I call them auntie and uncle, right? Mm. Um, and they don't even have to be related. But to me, that's that sign of respect that mm. we were given when we were kids. Yeah. You know, and we were taught that. But not just through, you know, sitting in the classroom. We were, we were modelled it, mm. you know. And I think there's those old principles that still are valuable. Now, having said that, there are also things in the past that were terrible. Yeah. That were bad that we don't need to bring back. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we don't need the, the old forms of abuse. You just put that in a box, segregation, chain it up, right. lock it up, and we're going to like yeah. launch that in. Launch it, man, because that, that stuff we don't need. But no. well, you got the principles of, of people taking responsibility of not just for others, but also for themselves. Yeah. Like that, that to me is uh, that some of those, those things that I think, you know, we, well, the we, selflessness and the compassion, and right. you know, these are the these are the boxes to be ticked in right. order to be, you know, the proactive, stable sort of integral role within the community. You know, that's spawning, helping raise the village, and, that, and that's what I think. Like Mackay had, yeah, you know, back in the day, and yeah, we're not going to go back there, but at the same time, I don't believe if we if we're going to move forward as a community, it's not about us being like Brisbane. Oh, it's God, not man. about us being like Rockhampton or Townsville. It's not about us being like America or Europe or whatever. It's about us being us. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Right, people come from all over the world to come here. Yeah. What, to see you? Bro, we... Yeah. <laughs> Autographs. <laughs> <laughs> but they, um, they do. They come from yeah. all over the world to see this place. Man. 100%. Why would we why want you? to, you know, destroy it? Or no. why would we want to neglect it? Like, yeah. we need to take pride in in what we have. Yeah, you know? understand what we have for starters. Understand what we have. 100%. Harness that, yeah. you know, because like on our doorstep, like we've got literally, we've got, you know, 20 minutes that way, the most pristine beaches right. up the East Coast. Then we got, you know, Youngler and Finch Hatton, the rainforest, like we got the islands just a stone throw away. Yeah. These, we've got all these, you, you know, you go a little bit out West, you've got some desert country, yeah. you know what I mean? And we've got the best of everything. I feel like the only thing lacking is possibly like the evolution bringing and understanding where those sort types of things mm. fit into the new world yeah right and and this is what like you said it doesn't have to be brisbane it doesn't have yeah. to be new york or blah 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 but what it has to be is the best version of this town yeah. Yeah. you know north queensland 24 7 it's yeah. perfect weather yeah well let's get out and do stuff at night time Definitely. and like, like you know what i mean Definitely. like there's so there's there's things that I, I'm just so grateful that I live here. I really do. But, you know, there's some... I feel like the evolution now, it's, it's like, imperative. We have, to, we have to do things in this community yeah. and, and spruik a sense of belonging to our youth well, so that 
not only do they want to stay, but they want to invest themselves yes. as well to bring that that sense of pride. Definitely lower the whole youth crime scenario. Why is it lowering? Because they feel a part of it. Well, that's what I was saying about the camps. I mean, like we're mm. doing these camps and I know I'm going on about it, but the, the thing is it doesn't have to be camps. What I'm saying is we need to be able to be inclusive. Mm. Like when we do our Indigenous men's camps, man, we do Indigenous men's camps and there's probably three Indigenous men out of 12 there because mm. the rest are non-Indigenous. Yeah. But the, the beauty of that is we're getting non-Indigenous people to see from an Indigenous perspective all of a sudden you see these walls of racism starting to break. Yeah. Because they go, oh, beautiful. wow, I didn't know you thought like that. Mm. Well, I didn't know that you treated each other like that. Mm. You know what I mean? So when people are able to have these conversations or get into a place where, you know what, I want to hear from you, I want to hear from you, I want to hear from my community, mm. because who better to talk about our community than our community, right? 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? They know what's going on there. They're on the front line. So when you bring those people in and mm. we were able to have a, a place of of discussion or maybe even just experiencing things together like when we, I'm talking about camps it used to be back in the day it used to be the, the raft races it used to be yeah. the sugar time festivals people will come yeah. together it's youth fringe festivals moment. like yep everything yeah. people come together and there's something in common mm. that's I think that's what unites the community when there's commonality mm. not, not division and, and you know, segregation you're and separation right, you, you, you wear that colour hat and I wear this colour shirt yeah. it's like who, yeah, who cares? Like the the point is, what are the things that make you the community? Mm. You know, and that's that's what sets you apart from other towns. Yeah, you know, and makes us unique to us. Mm. So anyway, I think that's that, that. Those are some of the like fundamentals of why I started doing what I'm doing with in the DV space and with with youth and that sort of thing too. Because I know that they're not growing up in the, in the society that I grew up in. You know, and yeah. we can't take that for granted. We can't lose that. No. We've got to teach my kids. They've got to teach. And their I think kids I now. think like the essence of where I was at as well is is to provide that sense of belonging in my shop. I've seen, you know, a lot of businesses out there, you know, with absolute perfect business models, all making money. Everyone's happy. Everyone's, you know, financial. Everyone's, you know, playing their part. However, I thought can I morph and manipulate my my plan yeah. where it, it creates that um, safe space right. and that almost like a men's shed without yeah. you know what I mean like with that that it, and it almost like a drop in the center without yeah. you know like so so it's like ticking a few spaces and a few boxes along the way but I think both of our journeys at when you look at it at a grassroots level it was community right and I feel even this coming together with this project here, yeah. um, with two microphones in our faces, yeah. at the forefront of it is community. Right. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm right now. I'm at a turning point with where I am going, and and I I, I always sort of thought, you know, I, I in the community, uh, in the in the industry, you know, I was looking at maybe open another one Brisbane Sydney Melbourne right. you know there was even I was even um, doing some business with some friends of mine in Dubai I was looking at um, opening up a shop there at, um, at this point in time I think I genuinely see um, my shop being still like it's still you know an important integral you know position in, in the community I, I feel like there's room to evolve though I feel like, you know, we, we started looking at morphing it into a fashion label yeah. and we were doing really well with that. Um, I've decided to run for council, as of you. Um, and so I just sort of eased up on the drive there just so I can get my head around what's happening, mm. um, uh, like, immediately. Right. But I think, I think, um, I think as, as I sort of navigate my next steps... You know, I feel like my end goal will be taking on an even bigger role in the community yeah. with my shop. Yeah. I think like it's just it's just been such a good base, um, and we've been able to sort of infiltrate scenarios along the yeah. along the way. So I think whatever we do moving forward, I think it will be bigger, larger, more community minded. Mm. And you know that. I mean, we started out at seventy square meters. Then we went to eighty square meters. Now we're sitting at three hundred. 
well, you know, with a pool room overlooking the ocean and, yeah. you know, um, the Blue River, sorry. Um, but, like, so I feel like what's next? Do we go even bigger again or do we refine the model where we maybe go to another, like, another um, venue? Yeah. But we can actually not just be, you know, a drop, like a a drop in center sort of thing but yeah. actually be a drop in center yes. you know what i mean yeah, do we exactly. do we go big enough where you know the front is a barber shop but you access around the back yeah. and you know we yeah. start tying in other scenarios you right. know i was i was thinking that the same thing for what we're doing and maybe similar to what you're saying around how do you grow yeah like because growth is important to any any business or to anyone you yeah know? like if you're not growing you know you're only sort of diminishing aren't you you know so yeah. I feel like for me, I was listening to, um, I don't know if it was a podcast or whatever it was, but they were talking about Richard Branson saying, how did you grow your business the way it was or how did it develop into the multi businesses that you had? And he said one thing, the three things that he did was firstly recognize that it's okay to have people smarter than you in your business. It was the first thing. The other thing was, um, in, um, was empowering them, mm. empowering those talented people. Yeah, give them some rope. To do what they yeah. need to do in your business. Yeah. And the third thing is, get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> get yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Because if I'm in the way, I'm running a business, and I'm, it, go, it goes back to this perception, you know, um, perspective thing. Mm. My perception is I need it done this way, right? The power and control over what I'm doing, mm. which is normal when you start it out. But at some point, if the things want to grow, we've got to have that perspective. We've got to broaden it, which is to take a step back and say, "How do you see it? Mm. How do you see how, how how am I going? How do you yeah, see and how I'm, you know, and that, ultimately, that's, that's not an easy thing to do, man. Like, no, of course me, it's, it's not. not easy. Well, sometimes you have to eat humble pie, right? And 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 that is is saying, yeah, heck, I was wrong. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine but then, at the end of the day, that's why we employ. Yeah, because we want to share the burden. Now that is, you know, yes, the workload. Yeah, but it's also our pathway. Yeah. You know, you can't just, okay, you can't just expect these guys to come and work for you and have no input in right. the evolution of scenarios. Yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah, so that's been important for me, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and moving forward, you know, I, I always sort of include the boys, oh, what do you think? Oh, I'm thinking about doing this, what do you think? Yeah. You know, I, I'm pretty sure they get sick of me asking, but it's important to me. It is, man, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, is. and that whole that whole understanding growth yeah. on, this, on the bigger picture. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's um, enough podcasting for tonight, or what? <laughs> Mate, I could talk all day. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Nah. But yeah, like round one. Um, round thanks one. if yeah. you've got this far. Uh, there's going to be more. Yeah, so thanks for, hanging around. thanks for hanging around. We've had a we've had a blast. I, I just I want to thank you, like yeah. personally, because like brother, we've been talking about this. We've been yarning yeah. about this for a long, long Many time. Years. Like, yeah. and for those people that know us, you know. Um, a lot of the mob here in Mackay know what we do, and right. and they're they're right behind us, and yeah. they they when they found out, you know, that we're doing this, they're just so appreciative. Yeah. Yeah. So so for those who have made it to the end of this video, this is the first of many to come, and we'll be talking about lots of different things, you know, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Um, we got uh, we we got some guests lined up to to come jump on board and have yeah. a yarn as well, but. Ultimately, yeah, this will be a sounding board for a lot of community-inspired yeah. scenarios, um, yeah. both very near and dear to my, myself and the marker. Yeah. But um, yeah. one down, many more to come. Thanks, brother. Yo. Yo.